All right. All right, everybody. If we can have our guest filmmakers join me at the front of the auditorium, please. For those of you who are heading out, please don't forget to vote. All right, once we get all our guests down here, I'm gonna ask each of you, please um, take turns introducing yourself, uh, the film you worked on, uh, and what your role was on the film. Let's start right here. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Jaron Lykin. I'm the writer and director of Project Turtle. Hi, I'm Armand, and I made the film Choice. I'm Harlan Spector. I was a co-producer, co-director of American Heartbreak. Um, my name's Dale Amore, also with uh, American Heartbreak, co-director, co-producer. Hi, my name is Brian Lahosky. I'm the director of Man in the Box. Hi, I'm Patrick Grayless, and I'm the writer of Man in the Box. Hi, I'm Andrew Rudd. I'm the, one of the collaborators in making and then directing and producing Rue. I'm Lee Will. I'm one of the producers of Snow Globe and the Cat. I'm Jean Zarzor. I'm Lydia in Snow Globe and the Cat. All right, well, <laughs> we will start at that end and work our way back before I open it up to you and ask each oh. of you to let us know either what was the inspiration, what led to making the film, or how you came to be involved in the film. They were very desperate in the 11th hour, <laughs> really, kind of. Um, well, our, our, uh, w the, the Tri-C Film Academy, l headed by Lee, Will, is blessed to have a very lovely endowment, I'm sure. I don't know how much, they don't <laughs> tell me. But James Matteo, who is a, a, a LA actor who relocated here to raise a family, very successful actor, had worked with our director, Rick Page, who is the director of photography for many Hollywood uh, television shows. He's also a writer and a producer, and he has agreed, is it just the second time? That was the second, yeah. You can tell this better. <laughs> anyway, wait, when they asked me to do it, I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the purpose behind this with Tri-C is we are trying to build the film industry workforce here in Cleveland. So we take a group a cohort of trainees and uh, train them for five weeks and then the last week we shoot a short film. So they get entrenched in the whole thing and uh, each year, it, this, is, this is our fourth and we just wrapped our fifth tonight. So I am wow. exhausted <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, it was 12 hour days, but you know, it's only a three day shoot and uh, it, it's amazing, and I know we have some trainees here, um, and uh, they're all working, you know, so Fantastic. it's works. The beginning of the idea for Rue came in a meeting with um, a person who was at the time my student, Lawrence, who's sitting right over there, we were trying to come up with an idea of a student film he could make that year that would be short, easy, and fast to make. Um, so we put a survey on Facebook and asked people, if you could go back in time to one moment, what would it be and what would you want to do as a result? And we were kind of overwhelmed by the 23 different um, answers that we got. And so we shot it and then a lot of things happened for a lot of years. <laughs> 
Um, and, fi and finally, um, I came back to the project and was able to finish it, partly because I was super inspired by the ways that regret fuels our lives and sometimes not in the best ways. Sometimes our regrets become a kind of fantasy. And, and I wanted to hold the stories not only of the people who submitted those responses, but also these terrific actors who I think of as being co-collaborators. They all um, gave a long story, and you can watch them all on Clearview Incorporated. Um, so. Uh, so I came up with it as a complete joke. Um, basically, basically we have classes. Uh, me and Brian go to CSU, uh, the new film program. They're four year old, I guess. Um, we have classes where we're supposed to come up with like three story ideas. And usually what will happen is I'll have two ideas I'm really like interested in, and then I'll just come up with a third one to fuck with people. Um, and so, uh, sophomore year, I had two ideas I really liked, and then I was like. You know, it'd be really funny if I pitched a film about a mime who accidentally kills himself in front of the class, because I'm just I'm just sick like that apparently. But everyone loved that that concept over everything else, and just I don't know. I just just for just I wrote the script, and Brian loved it, and I gave it to him because I wanted it out of my sight. <laughs> he can tell you more about it. I was gonna go into the artistic merit of it, but okay. <laughs> um, so, in fall of 2020, um, we didn't really have any production classes going on at that time, so me and several other students, myself, uh, my producer, Sarah Benny, who's out here, in here somewhere, I don't know. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, we band together to make a couple micro short films with kind of like the same crew and like just like similar casts and stuff like that, and uh, I read Patrick's script, and I thought, this is, the, this, is, this is pretty good, so we should make that, and that was one of the short films that we made for it. Yeah. Hey. We started uh, working on American Heartbreak uh, around 2000, right before the pandemic, and what, what we really, we, we, 50th anniversary of the Kent State shootings was coming up. Dale and I, we've collaborated for years on, on stories, and we thought, uh, well, let's go out and see we, what we can find. Um, and we really didn't, we, we went to the May 4th Visitor Center, talked to Lori Bowes, who was a director there, and kicked around some ideas. She, we, had, we had heard of Glenn Frank, but we never really knew what happened to him. And uh, Lori told us about uh, that, that Glenn's son, Alan, was actually out there. Um, he was one of the students in that mass of students that was sitting out there. Uh, and that, we, that just grabbed us as, that's the story that, that we wanted to do. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, pandemic kind of interrupted things for a while, but we got back to it. And uh, that, that's how it came to be. Um, and you asked about inspiration, I suppose. I actually had never heard of Glenn Frank. Uh, Harlan went to Kent State, I went to Bowling Green. Uh, I knew the song about Kent State and that's about what I knew. Um, but I was really inspired by Kent, uh, Glenn Frank after we talked about his story and we found out what, uh, what happened to him after the shooting and his pivotal role. And so I guess the inspirational part to me was Glenn Frank is kind of an Atticus, Atticus Finch character to me. He's an everyman. I think uh, he was driven by truth and he was driven by citizenship. So. Um, yeah, I was really inspired by that, especially uh, when I look at what's going on in today politically. I think kind of reminds us that we've all been here before, and I'm thinking to myself, where are the Glenn, Glenn Franks of the world today? So um, that's kind of what inspired me about the, about the film. Um, well, I just started junior year in high school, and I hadn't made a movie for a couple of months, so I decided... Um, Let's get some friends together, let's find a script online, and let's shoot something, you know. And it happened that the day kind of turned out perfectly overcast, and a lot of things went wrong, but a lot of things went right. And I am just, you know, editing it in a weekend, and it was a really fun experience to do with a couple of my friends, and yeah. Um, for me, um, I first got into film at the start of the pandemic. 
um, early 2020 when basically all I could do was escape to the basement with my dad and figure out which movie we were going to watch next. Um, so I'm new to film, and this is my first bigger one that I've made. Um, and while I was just getting into film and learning how to make films, I was also becoming aware of the homelessness problem that was happening in America because people were losing their jobs and then becoming evicted. And there was this huge eviction crisis. And um, I can even remember back to one night when my dad and I went to uh, pick up uh, dinner from one of our favorite restaurants in Shaker Square. And uh, we passed a homeless couple um, that was sitting outside on a bench um, in the freezing cold and snow was falling down on top of them. And they were huddled together in blankets and it really made me realize what was happening in America. And I had the idea to um, make a movie that could, you know, have somewhat of an impact on what's going on. All right, let's get some questions from you. Yes, sir. Um, I do not think I'll be coming back because I have school tomorrow. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that I may have changed is, you know, I, as you guys could see, a bunch of my interviews, at least for my film, took place on Zoom just because I was limited from the pandemic and everything. I didn't really have the ability to interview people in person because of the COVID restrictions, but... I would definitely want to get that done if I could redo it. Like him, I do have school tomorrow as well, so I probably won't be uh, returning. But if I had to think of one thing that I could change, um, I was really happy with the product that came out. And I learned from making movies in the past that were much worse than this one that um, be happy with what you're able to accomplish and be happy with what you're able to put out there um, so I don't know if I'd really change anything, to be honest. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I don't know that I would really change anything. I, you know, there, we talked, we talked, there's a, we could have expanded the film. It's a, there's a, you know, much deeper story, of course, about, uh, May 4th and, and about Glenn Frank and, and we didn't want to retell the May 4th story because we, we, we felt that that had been covered in a lot of films and a lot of books and things like that. We wanted to do something new. The only thing is, you know, we, uh, I would have loved to have interviewed Glenn Frank's daughter. She lives in Hawaii, so that made it kind of uh, impossible. Um, you know, it's zero budget. Um, but she, you know, just like uh, Alan, you know, he was, Alan was so deeply affected, not only because uh, he was a witness to the shootings and went through this trauma himself, uh, but he was the whole family. I mean, it was a real family tragedy, the shootings. And you could probably say that uh, about many families that were touched by May 4th. Uh, but uh, his daughter, yeah, hi, she would have been great to get on camera. But, um, you know, you do what you can with, you work with what you have. Um, yeah, I think there's always things you think, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. I think I come out of, both Harlan and I come out of the newspaper business. We were a long time newspaper, uh, worked for the Plain Dealer. And I think, Working at a daily newspaper, really, at the end of the day, you go with what you have. You don't go with what you, you go with the best of what you have, not the best of what you want. And I think at a certain point, you just kind of deal with the realities of what you have. So, can I tell the story I want to tell? Do I have all the B-roll I want? G generally not. Um, do we have the budget to get the interviews we want? No. But can we tell that story? And do we feel like we can tell a compelling tale, I guess? And so we felt like, yeah, we, I think we... We could do it. I'm not sure that we could do Glenn Frank justice in 15 minutes, quite honestly. But, um, you know, um, and, and th lastly, I'll just say is sometimes films are, are an answer and sometimes they're, they're just a prompt. And I think we felt this could be a prompt to pe have people maybe question a little bit more, uh, use it as a cautionary tale of what's going on today, as, as well as... Um, I think just learn a little bit more of, about what happened during that time. So, 
Uh, more blood. <laughs> more blood. I wouldn't change anything about the what happened in the past uh, with this film. It wasn't always awesome, um, but that's, I think, the one thing that maybe I learned more than anything is that I hope that I change in the future because I learned from what happened in the past. I, too, wouldn't change anything because it served its purpose and everybody had a great time doing it. Um, you may have something Whoa. you would like to change, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I think your knee, which you did You're do, didn't you? My, uh, that was gonna be. We had an embarrassment of riches. I mean, the way the Academy is being run and the, you know, what were there, 30, 35 crew members, yeah. student crew we members. Had, we had 15 students, basically, and then we we um, bring in uh, industry professionals and they mentor these students and uh, they, uh, they eat it up. It's just amazing to see. And my favorite part is tomorrow we have this, we wrap it up. Everybody loads out all their gear, but we do what I call the kumbaya moment. We all get in a big circle and they go around the room and that's when I start crying. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very important. so I, I just had a second knee replaced two months ago. While we were shooting, this is two years ago now, you know, my knees were just bone on bone. It's all just like your, where's the mime story? You could have, yeah, you <laughs> need a little therapy. But other than that, <laughs> it's a nice little surprise with the bones and the blood. Uh, that's kind of what my knee must have looked like under surgery. Ew, yeah, really? yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the crew, all of these young people help me ice my knee, I mean, I was in so much pain. And because it was such a, it was better than some of the feature films I've been in, this experience. It just was a love fest. And everybody came together and, you know, just, it was beautiful. Um, um, Garage Creative uh, did the sound and all the, the editing for the film. And, and I've worked with their, one of their owners for ever. 30 years, and so I got to see people, the makeup, I mean, it was a big, wonderful thing, and then who knew we were gonna be in lockdown? So I wish that my mother had lived to, she died two years ago, and I wish she was here. So I was crying after the movie because an accomplishment is something, no matter how, what size, what the, point of the accomplishment is it's it's a very heartfelt making a movie is of any size is like you know you put everything into it your blood sweat and tears and um you know it's an emotional experience it's it's giving birth to something and so i wish i had had my knees done and my mother was here and that we never had a pandemic and bravo to all of you because i really enjoyed Really, really enjoyed. And Dale, is that Dale Amari? Amari, I just did voiceover for you. <laughs> so I get to see somebody else that I've just recently did a job for. It's a wonderful community. Either Cleveland State or preferably Tri-C Film Academy. <laughs> if you want to learn about film, go to both. Hit up. Get your four-year degree, then come to us, and we'll put you to work. And you will not regret the experience. Yeah. It was it was even, uh, lastly, I promise, I learned things. And I've been in this business 40 years, in the union for 33 years. And I learned things. There's an, always a chance to learn. And scene. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll take the other part of the question that went away. I will definitely be here for more good short films tomorrow. Yay. Yeah. Who's next? Over here. I'll be back tomorrow night. Yes. Re encore yeah. performance. 7.20 uh, will be, sh our f ours will be again. Everybody else is in the, tomorrow? In the comedy. It's comedy block tomorrow. Comedy block. So we're going to leave uh, the freaking mime out of this? And it is the first. <laughs> so exciting as shorts. It is the first program on standby for the weekend of the festival is the comedy shorts program. 
So it's going to be wonderful tomorrow to have so many people here for shorts. You had a question. Jack, come down. And here comes the mind, but he's talking. Show us. I think that was no, he didn't. No. <laughs> Who's next? Well, before we let you all go, last question for everyone. What's next? Where, where are you planning to go with this? What might we see you doing next? Well, Ooh, there you go. Mine's easy. We just finished it. So, and we do one every year. So this one was um, directed by Kara White. Um, again, uh, Adam White is our director of photography always, um, and again, the whole crew and whatever. But this one is called The Resistance. We hope to be back in the festival next year. <laughs> and it is about the French resistance during World War II. Right? Okay. You wanna? Yeah. I want to be in it. It's too late. <laughs> too late. Um, <laughs> I have two <laughs> other films. <laughs> yeah, who was in it? Red. The Red Coat? Yeah, yeah The Red Sister. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Uh, <laughs> well, I love when <laughs> actors laugh at their own jokes, don't you? Uh, I have two other films in fe festivals. One is uh, called Dear Zoe, and it is in Phoenix, and uh, it was just in uh, another festival uh, somewhere. I can't remember. I wasn't there. Beautiful film. And, um, and then another one will be in 114 festivals across the world. And it is called 70 Times 7. It's a three-person cast. And this young, young director made the effort. He got, he got poo-pooed here. And he was so depressed about it that he, he hired a uh, company that does the pitch for you and the it's called iFilm or something. I, little dementia, <laughs> maybe. And he uh, just went for it. And 144, uh, 114 film festivals, uh, including Lebanon and Japan and uh, Chicago and New York. And so there is a resource for your film if you're really ambitious and you have a little money to invest in having someone do the distribution of the uh, introduction of your film. And I wish I could think of it, but you probably know. What is it called? It's I a, don't know. It's like an e Okay, all right. Nobody knows? I'm going to find it. I don't know either, but it's, <laughs> you can find it. It's just Google film, dis film you know, um, festival distribution, and I don't know where they are. <laughs> Company with the word film in it. <laughs> You're welcome. No. <laughs> uh, Emily Heisey has helped me produce the last three short films that I've made, and we are in pre-production right now for a short, a micro short, that we're going to shoot this spring, summer, fall, um, called I Killed Your Dog, that focuses, it's not that kind of movie, though. <laughs> it, it focuses on um, the the school to prison pipeline and the mechanisms whereby that, that is maintained. Um, so I've transitioned from writing to acting mostly. I don't really write that much anymore. Um, I was in another one of Brian. Hello. Okay. Um, I was in one of Brian's more recent films called Down to Clown, where I play a clown. You, you can only apparently make movies about one topic. Um, other than that, we also do a comedy series on YouTube called Disastrous, where everything is also super, super um, dark and existential. And um, Yeah, honestly, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, currently working on my thesis project for school. It's called Young Folks Home. It's a short 
about a bunch of kids that disguise themselves as the elderly to live in an old folks home. And maybe after that, maybe I'll make a normal movie. <laughs> no, you won't. No. We're uh, talking, kicking around an idea for, uh, we actually started shooting today. Yeah. Um, about the people in the news business and the newspaper bus business specifically, there's been a lot out there about what happens in the newspaper business. Uh, we don't want to retell that story. But what we do want to do is tell the story of what's happened to the human beings who used to deliver the news um, and what, what's happened to their lives. So that's where we're at. Um, I got, I applied for a school-sponsored fellowship called the Stranod Program, and I got applied for a two-year grant, and so the school will be funding my next film, which I should be shooting this summer, about a 30-minute movie, hopefully, and then after that, it's college applications and, you know, going to film school. Uh, frankly, I have no idea what I'll be doing next. <laughs> I'll be, uh, going to college at Ohio State next year. So uh, we'll see what happens. Excellent. Well, please join me in thanking our guest filmmakers for being with us. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to vote. Your ballots are important. And we'll hope to see you at more shorts programs at the festival. Have a great festival night.